Hi, I hope you're hearing me. Uh, at least the video recording software is claiming that I activated the microphone, so uh, that should hopefully work out fine. Yeah, so welcome to this 19th Hangout on this lovely sunny Saturday, uh, September the 29th of 2018. Um, I'm your host, Gina Reuske, <laughs> as usual, and uh, yeah, long time no see. I sadly had to skip the last, uh, yeah, the, the, the August installment of this uh, little series, uh, more on why that was later. Uh, first of all, a short outline. Um, uh, what we are going to talk about here today is what we usually talk about in these uh, broadcasts. Uh, I'll first tell you what I've been up to the past couple of uh, weeks since we last saw each other, um, what will be the next steps in the development of Octoprint, and uh, then we'll have a short Q&A segment. So uh, first things first, uh, the Q&A segment will be really short this time because we only had three uh, questions in the backlog, but as usual, there will be a live chat to the right over there on desktop or below on mobile. And uh, I will keep an eye on that and uh, just feel free to ask questions in there as well, should anything come up while watching this and uh, while watching this live, of course, in the recording afterwards, it won't work. Um, and I'll get to that then uh, after the prepared questions. Okay, so what I've been up to. Uh, those of you who uh, saw the small announcement that I skip, had to skip the last um, yeah, the last broadcast already know that I had uh, a personal situation on hand that demanded a lot of my attention. I really don't want to go into too much detail here or in, into any detail at all, to be honest, because it is a really personal situation. But uh, I can uh, make you rest assured, I hope it's uh, it wasn't a health scare or any like that, anything like that. I'm healthy. Everything is fine in that regard and you don't have to worry. And this situation is handled now more or less. So um, uh, it was very uh, disruptive, but uh, I'm now slowly getting back on top of, uh, of yeah, everything that I couldn't <laughs> handle while it was happening. And uh, yeah, just let me take the chance to thank every one of you who uh, reached out after this Patreon post at, uh, and, yeah, and sent uh, well wishes my way. I really, really appreciate it and it really, really meant a lot to me at that moment, especially. Um, anyhow, uh, due to this situation, I uh, yeah, sadly didn't get uh, as much tackled in these past weeks as I would have hoped to tackle, but yeah, I still managed to get quite a lot done. Um, so mostly I focused this time again on, uh, on the next maintenance release, 1.3.10. And uh, the first thing that I did, actually I think on the, on the day even still of the last broadcast was that I introduced uh, environment checks per update. So um, in the future, Octoprint will require a minimum version of Python, of PIP, of setup tools in order to allow to have itself be updated through itself. <laughs> um, because, uh, yeah, well, the problem is that I've gotten so many complaints about fail updates from users in the past running some ancient images or wonky setups and uh, I, I sorry, uh, but I can't really support uh, years old Octopi installs and uh, yeah, because I already need the better part of a day for all the update tests that I do before launch, uh, before releasing every single release candidate and of course the full stable releases. So yeah, I have to, I, I sim simply have to draw the line somewhere and this line will now be drawn in the form of uh, automated update checks. Uh, by Octoprint itself, which starting with 1.3.10, so 1.3.9 won't yet do that, but 1.3.10 will. It will check if the Python version you are running is among those that I have tested or that are in my test suite, better, uh, better said, and um, it will also check the same for the PIP versions and the setup tools versions, because those are the three things that usually cause the, mo uh, the most prob uh, trouble in, in my past experience. And yeah, so um, I have to admit that I'm kind of fed up of getting screamed at for issues with ancient software versions. So this was a step that I didn't take lightly, but I think that will yeah, protect people in the future. And I'm sorry, I have to drink something because as you might hear right now, my throat is getting a bit dry. I'm, I also have a bit of a cold going on, mm. which hopefully won't become that big of a problem, but 
<coughs> the throat is a bit of a problem right now with the speaking. <coughs> yeah. Um, if you watched the last uh, broadcast, episode 18, you might remember that uh, I mentioned that it would be nice to have a backup plug-in and um, that the... Um, uh, that that would that that would facilitate upgrading to newer versions of images and all that as well. And well, when I added this environment uh, checks uh, uh, per update, I also thought, well, I can't really do that and then not facilitate an, a good upgrade path from an older image to a newer image. So the next version of Octoprint 1.3.10 will also ship with a bundled backup backup plugin. Um, or rather a backup and restore plugin, because what uses a backup if you can't restore it, right? Um, so basically what this plugin will do is on a click of a button, it will create a zip file with all of your settings. And if you decide though, so, also with your uploads and your time-lapse uh, recordings and or time-lapse recordings, I should say, you can select both uh, or none or either or whatever you want. Um, and it will also create a list of all the plugins that you have currently installed. And um, when you then restore this zip file through the restore UI, uh, it will restore all these uh, settings, all uh, your files and metadata and all that stuff. And it will also try to reinstall all the plugins that you had um, with the small caveat that it cannot do that for plugins which are not available on the official plugin re repository. I know that there are some plugins out there um, that are, yeah, well, not re not registered on there, um, but still installed by people through the plugin manager. And um, yeah, what it will do for these plugins, it will uh, lock out the homepage of the plugin for you so that you can yeah, get the plugin again there, hopefully, and manually install it. But um, I can't do anything else than that, sadly, because yeah, due to how everything works together, I can't just zip up the old plugin files actually and, 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 and reinstall them. That would cause too many issues down the road and make everything unstable. So um, if you have any plugins installed in your Octoprint instance that you make heavy use of and don't want to live without, but uh, which aren't yet on the official repository, please get in touch with the plugin authors and tell them to register them on the repository. Um, because, um, yeah, it, it would be good, I guess, if everyone had uh, access to those and uh, could did not have to rely on accidentally stumbling across them. Yeah. Um, the next thing that I did, or rather that uh, I was kept busy with, um, yeah, if you follow the Octoblog, uh, which you really should, by the way, and which is also built into the announcement plugin of uh, Octoprint itself, um, you'll have seen this post about uh, secure, ways, uh, secure ways to remotely access your Octoprint instance by a guest blogger, Jubaleth. Um, that one was triggered by a post by the ISC um, Internet Storm Center, I think they are called, uh, the, the SENS ISC, um, about uh, yeah thousands of unsecured Octoprint instances that were discovered online. Um, and I have to admit that this being the case, that there are so many instances out there that are uh, accessible online and some of them uh, even without any authentication sadly wasn't a big surprise for, uh, for me because I feared that was the case. But still, um, it's not something that you should ever do. So I, I really cannot emphasize enough that just like a paper printer, your home automation system, your U-Bridge, your refrigerator or your file server, Octoprint really doesn't belong on the internet. So you really shouldn't just put a part forward in your firewall and, uh, and router and give everyone on the internet access to your instance. Um, because contrary to what you might think, your IP isn't a secret and neither is anything that you have running on it. So you can really, really bet on uh, yeah, on every IP that, that comes online, uh, being scanned by uh, the one or other automated scan bot uh, within a couple of minutes of going online and uh, all the services on it being enumerated and possibly also automatically be checked for uh, exploitable vulnerabilities. And um, yeah, so do not do this. Do not put yourself at risk like this. Um, this means that 
your octoprint instance can be found by people who want to find it and want to play around with it and want to try to crack it open and see what they else can do with it. And I really, really do my best to build secure software here. Um, but I can't promise that I don't make mistakes. I'm a human after all. Humans make mistakes. It's part of our nature. And personally, I do not want to um, have such a mistake cause some serious, serious issues for you. But that might happen if you are, yeah, if you are as risk taking, willing, uh, risk taking, risk. Okay, I'm, I'm not able to finish the sen sentence like I wanted because I lack the English language for it. But um, if you are, yeah, if you are opening it up to everyone and their mother on the net, then everyone and the mother uh, and their mother on the net can try to Uh, exploit any mistakes that I, I might have made. And yeah, don't do this, please. You have a, 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 a physical object attached uh, to Octoprint, which is your printer, which has heaters, which has stepper motors. You do not want to even run a remote risk of this getting under the control of someone who isn't you or people you trust. So read the blog post, please. There are, in, uh, there are various ways um, offered in order to remotely access your Octoprint instance at home while you are on the go, but without having to do to do something unsecure uh, as, as a single simple port forward. Um, yeah. And yeah, just remember, I already have enough gray hair on my head without having to spend my nights giving statements to journalists on the carelessness of some users and uh, measures taken to uh, prevent Uh, future cases of this from happening while at the same time juggling tricky life personal uh, life situations uh, on the other hand so yeah please stop port forwarding thank you speaking of that um another thing i did after this whole situation uh, is that octoprint will uh, starting with 1310 now display a, a nifty little nag message in form of, of, of those notifications you already know and hate <laughs> that pop up in the upper right of uh, Octoprint's user interface if you log in to Octoprint from an IP that is not on your local network. So um, you will be able to ignore this message. Um, if you are, yeah, if you are sure what you are doing there and if, if what you're doing there is, is, is secure. So for example, if you're accessing it over, a, over a VPN, so a virtual private network, or have set up a reverse proxy with additional authentication methods in front of it, then you are, you are free to just hit the ignore button on this little message. And that will set a cookie in your browser to not show it to you again in that browser, but in every other browser that should remotely connect to this instance. So yeah, um, if you do ignore this and don't have any additional security in front of your port forward, then please don't come crying <laughs> when someone evil from the internet breaks your printer. Yeah. Um, and another thing that I did is something that a lot of you have been asking me for a very long time now, and which I originally had planned to only release with 1.4.0 with the new permission system, but which I now uh, basically ported back and uh, Yeah, pushed in there, uh, although not as fully, yeah, not as fully uh, functional as I'd like to. So basically, Octoprint will no longer default to a guest read-only mode. So uh, you, it, it, from from now on, when you when you access an Octoprint instance and you are not logged into this Octoprint instance already, it will first show you a login dialog, and it will not allow you to do anything other than show you a field where you can enter your username and a field where you can uh, can enter your password and then enter button. And this is all. And after that, you will be redirected to the um, uh, to the actual interface if the login succeeds. And once you log out, you get back the, the dialogue again. Um, the bad thing about this, and this is actually a problem that I in general have with Octoprint, which I also have with the granular permission system on 1.4.0, and which is simply due to the nature how Octoprint works is that this cannot protect your webcam. So if you add a port forward with this, Octoprint will, dis will be secured, your webcam won't, right? So your webcam will still be viewable by anyone who guesses the URL. And if you are running Octopi, that won't be that tricky to guess at all because all Octo Octopi instances have the webcam at, uh, yeah, Uh, IP slash webcam slash. So um, 
Again, if you port forward, add additional security me measures. Octoprint cannot secure the webcam. It doesn't control the webcam. It is not the webcam server, so it has no way at all to shut off access to the webcam that it yeah, that, that is not authenticated. It simply can't do that. Your webcam server has to do that. Yeah. Um, and this is actually the reason why I was reluctant to add this for so long, because, yeah, now we have this situation where it will look like uh, nobody can do anything and nobody can see anything. But the problem is, of course, the webcam, which is not part of Octoprint, but only embedded in Octoprint, will still be visible. And yeah. I'm not so happy with that. And this is what I meant with not, not fully functional the way I would like it to, but there's simply no technical possibility right now to do anything but this. Uh, and I'm not even sure that there ever will be another one apart from writing my own webcam server and somehow, yeah, working around these limitations that way, which is a bit, uh, yeah. Yeah. In any case, even with this in place, um, my um, uh, my advice still stands. Do not just blindly port forward. There are better options. <laughs> See the blog post for some more details on which those are. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I also wrote, uh, I also did several bug fixes and improvements over the last couple of weeks. Um, uh, too numerous to count, uh, to, to, to account for here now. Um, but there are a bunch of bunch of things that have now been uh, fixed that uh, accumulated in the bug tracker. Yeah. Um, next thing uh, that I did was, uh, you might have seen this on Twitter or if you follow it um, the, the, on the, on the uh, community forum, I gave up a couple of plugins for adoption. adoption. I can't speak today. Um, because I sadly do like the time that they deserve uh, to get some, uh, yeah, to get dedicated next to all the work on Octoprint proper. So I had to realize that uh, a bunch of the plugins that I maintained in parallel simply, yeah, they, they see a lot of traffic, they get a lot of questions, and I usually take weeks, if, if not months, before I can get around to actually taking a look at that stuff. So I finally bit the bullet and decided, okay, um, let's start looking for some new maintainers for these plugins. And so this is what I did. And if you are interested in becoming the maintainer of the push bullet plugin or the growl plugin, because those are the two of the five that I put up for adoption that are still, uh, yeah, looking for some new home, basically, then uh, please get back to me in their correspond corresponding app for adoption issues. Basically, um, yeah, if you are already a plugin dev anyhow, or if you, yeah, want to get into this stuff and on, fir on first looking at it, feel like you would be comfortable with that, talk to me and we'll figure something out, I guess. Yep. So, and then finally, you might already have spotted it on my wrist. I was at Milk Cafe Hannover <coughs> last nine, no, uh, second to last weekend. So from the 15th until the 16th, I was there the whole weekend. Um, sadly, I only shook a small number of hands <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it was a nice experience there. Uh, very, very full though. So it, it gets larger and larger every year, apparently, while the space it is in doesn't seem to grow. So um, uh, I was happy that there once again was an outer area to, yeah, to flee to <laughs> from time to time and get a breather. But it was really nice to be there again and I'm probably going there next year. And uh, just keep in mind with, with events like this, I'm shy and I don't know you, but if you know me, then please say hi. So, okay. Um, okay, uh, what are the next steps? So after I'm now finally uh, slowly getting back on top of things, I of course also want to get back on track with 140. Uh, the whole stuff that I mentioned that kept me busy the cast of ca past couple of weeks, including the personal situation, of course, kind of threw a wench into progress there. Um, and I frankly also didn't feel comfortable tackling it while all this other stuff that required my immediate attention was going on. Um, so yeah, that would be one part of the plans, the, 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 yeah, the, the, the near uh, future plans. The other thing would be to get out a first RC of 1.3.10. Um, yeah, I still want to get the app 
application authentication plugin that I mentioned last time, bundled and pushed, making good progress there too. Uh, this is actually something that I forgot to mention that I had been, have been working on as well. Um, and uh, there was also, this morning there was also still one issue to tackle uh, for which I not had, which I hadn't yet found a good approach uh, since this morning. Uh, this is now solved. <laughs> um, yeah, and once uh, this this plugin is is in, and I also have taken a last round over the issue tracker. If there is anything else that looks like it needs to be tackled in this release, I think it's time to yeah prepare first release candidate. But this is not going to happen within the next two weeks. I can promise you that because. First, before I really can get going on all this again, I really, really, really am in desperate need of a short vacation and I'm going to take that. Um, I need some time to recharge after the events of the past couple, uh, past two months. And I also haven't really had any time off at all since uh, last Christmas. So it's really, really about time that I change this. And right after I return, so I think yeah, not right after. There's a week of, of, of regular work in between, but the, the week after that, so on from October 24th until 26th, I, have, I will be in Karlsruhe at PyCon.de, so the, the, the German version of the Python conference. Will be my first time there. I'm not really sure what to expect, but I figured, hey, a Python conference might make sense for me, considering that, yeah, Octoprint is written in Python. <laughs> um, and should our paths cross there, please also don't hesitate to say hi. Uh, I'll actually also be there starting from the 23rd, so evening of the 23rd, which is a Tuesday, I think. Um, yeah, so should you be there, ping me and maybe we can meet up somewhere. I don't know. Um, okay. So that was that. And for the next bit, which is the Q&A segment, I have to somehow convince this recording software to switch over to my right screen. Haha. -ha. Okay. So, as you remember from the last couple of uh, episodes, I've now taken to um, actually preparing a small slide set with the questions that are going to be answered during the Q&A segment so that you don't yeah, have to listen really closely while I'm reading it for you and then uh, uh, forget uh, halfway through what I'm telling you what it was all about. So now you get the question on the screen. And the first question is by Sebastian. You are yourself a patron and you are supporting other creators. You tell us about one uh, one or two project or creators you especially like or love. So um, I couldn't decide uh, which two or three, I, uh, one or two I should pick out. So I picked four. Um, and the first one is a German podcast, German science podcast, actually. Um, it's called Methodisch Incorrect. Um, they are still on Patreon. I, Patreon, I don't know how long, how much longer they will do that though, because they are currently switching over to uh, other means of supporting them, which I gladly follow. Um, so uh, this this podcast is made by two researchers, uh, both are physicists. Um, they in, in, in each episode they present four scientific papers from various fields of study, so biology, psychology, everything under the sun, basically. Um, in a way that you can really understand what was going on there. Oops, and that was a bit too fast. Uh, what, what was really going on? What was the focus on, uh, of the paper? And uh, sometimes they also don't fully understand it themselves, but this is hilarious in its own way. Um, and yeah, it's, it's really fun. Uh, there's also always a experiment for each episode, which they uh, narrate how to do it so that you, if, if you have all that stuff at home, you can also do it yourself. Um, there's a beer of the week, which for me, not drinking alcohol isn't that interesting, but it might be interesting to everyone else. <laughs> and also a China gadget of the week and, uh, and also horrible music in between. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, really funny. And, uh, there's also a ton of interesting signs in there. And, uh, I've also had the pleasure of seeing those two guys, um, twice now live at, at, a chaos, at the chaos communication Congress where they did live shows, which was really, really awesome. And uh, yeah, so if you understand German, you really should give this podcast a listen. In my opinion, it's my favorite podcast by far. And uh, you can find them at minkorrekt.de. Okay, 
The next one, which you already had a glance at, is uh, a woodworker from Canada called Dustin Penner, who makes this YouTube channel DP Make Stuff. Um, he has some really, really hilarious ideas of stuff to build. Um, and uh, everything he does, uh, yeah, he really shows totally awesome execution in there. And his videos don't only help me relax, because for some reason watching other people build stuff with wood to totally relaxes me. Um, but they also make me laugh all the time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this is really great. And I also had the chance to meet him uh, for dinner late last year, because he happened to be in the neighborhood for a job project. And uh, so we have had a chance to meet up one evening. That was really, really great. An awesome guy. And you really should subscribe if you don't haven't yet and enjoy woodworking. Yeah. And uh, another YouTube channel it might be a bit more familiar to people probably it's a uh, click spring that's a metal worker or clock builder uh, from australia um and i think two years or so ago when i was sick or maybe it was last year i don't know i uh, really binged through this series of him building uh, by hand and such as uh, an, an awesome skeleton clock and uh, that really really hooked me so it's for some reason it's completely mesmerizing to see his attention to detail and how he does everything and he also um, gives background info on why he does things the way he does them and um, the results are always completely mind-blowing and yeah i ha now have a bit of a backlog um, uh, with regards to the the videos the, that he released in the past month and i'm really looking forward to catching up um, so if you never have seen anything by him you might want to give this a quick watch uh, yeah some some video some short video maybe and the fourth I wanted to uh, tell you about is uh, Questionable Content, which is a webcomic I've been reading now since, I think, 2004, ever since I got it recommended by a friend. Um, and I even got a couple of books of uh, the, the first couple of years, basically, um, of the webcomic at home now. And uh, so it only felt natural after all these t all this time to support that guy on the on, on Patreon as well when I saw that he had one. And it's a bit hard to describe what this webcomic is about. It's basically a couple of friends and the humanoid robots uh, or AIs living life and getting into various funny or not so funny situations. So sometimes the comics are hilarious. Sometimes they're really sad. In any case, they're never boring. And I really, really enjoy the art style. And there are also some very nerdy jokes. Um, so yeah, well, the characters just have really grown on me the past couple of years, I guess. Well, um, that was my four Patreon patron projects of love or something like that that I uh, wanted to showcase here. Okay, so next question by Evil Job. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? I did some research. About 320 kilograms on a good day with the wind at his back. Yes, I did answer that. I know. I should have just skipped it, but I couldn't resist. Um, and the final question in the backlog by Mark. Uh, considerations for upgrading to Python 3. Uh, yep. A lot of considerations. This actually adds a bit to, I, I don't know if you saw the last time I mentioned, uh, I said that every time you start one of these questions with, have you ever thought about the answer is usually yes. In this case, that also um, is the case. Um, so actually, if you take a look at the devil branch, so where 140 is being slowly but steadily built up, uh, you might see that there have been a couple of pull requests merged uh, that are uh, working on improvement of Python 3 compatibility. And the goal actually is to have 140 be able to run on both Python 2 and 3. Uh, I'm not yet sure if that will actually pan out because there is a ton of work still to do, but it's a, it's a, it's the current goal, and I really hope that it can be reached because well, we do have this uh, end of life support for Python 2 in the back of our next, which I think was uh, April 2020. So not that much time left, actually. Um, anyhow, 140 hopefully will support 2 and 3. And then the next step will be to switch to support only Python 3. 
And I would say with 1.5.0, but considering the fact that that would basically make it backwards incompatible to the current versions, we would probably have to call that 2.0. Um, but yeah, first 1.4.0 and then we'll see how we continue. Um, the problem here will, of course, is is very common in these situations, uh, plugins, because I can make Octoprint itself, the core of the bundle plugins and all that, I can make that Python 3 compatible. That's not a problem. I mean, apart from it being a problem regarding the work that needs to put, be put into, but in, I can do that. I have control over the code. I can um, access it and make the necessary changes. I can't, oh, sorry. <coughs> I can't do that. Uh, obviously for any of the third-party plugins. So um, yeah, that's something that needs also to be taken up with the authors that are maintaining these plugins. And I'm not sure how long it will take for them to follow uh, follow through once uh, Octoprint runs on both two and three. Um, it might be that some of the plugins aren't maintained anymore and then things will get interesting, but I guess we'll have to cross that bridge when we get there. In any case, yeah, definitive, uh, definitive. I'm, 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 I'm all the time switching to German today. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm definitely looking into upgrading uh, Octoprint to be compatible to Python three, and I'm also looking uh, to upgrading or to, to long, to, yeah, to, to switching Octoprint to Python three exclusively in the long term. Especially since Python three also has a ton of interesting features that I would love to be able to utilize in Octoprint, but which I so far just can't because I would basically uh, lock out every established install out there. Um, so I'm hoping that it won't be as hurtful and as painful as, as it currently looks like it will be. But um, yeah, if it will be, it will be. It's something that needs to happen. There's not much chance considering that the end of life of Python 2 is nearing. All right. That was actually the last questions of those that still were in the backlog. So uh, now would be the time to speak up with any live questions. Those of you who are watching this live, which should be five people as far as I understand this right now. Um, but as far as I can see in the live chat, there currently isn't anything in there. So I'm just going to take another sip of water while you try to think of something and if you can't think of something then we'll just wrap this up a bit earlier than anticipated mm. <coughs> yikes <coughs> it feels a bit like i've swallowed one of these a rasp <laughs> um okay so still not anything in the uh in the live chat so i guess We'll just keep it a short one this time. Um, so as you remember, the uh, exactly in one month that weekend, I will just have been have returned from uh, PyCon. So I'm not entirely sure if I'll be able to make it on that Saturday, but I'll see if I can make it on the one after. So on the on the uh, early. Uh, that will already be November, right? Yeah, <laughs> on the on the early in the in the on the first November weekend. I I have to check though. I'm not entirely sure yet. It's just roughly in one month. In a, anyhow, will be the next of of the next one of these broadcasts. And of course, as usual, I will post an appointment on Patreon. Ah, okay. Just a quick uh, stop here. Uh, Sebastian just said, I have not understood which plugins you have mentioned. Uh, I guess this is referring to those that I gave up for adoption, right? Um, because, yeah, as, so I gave up for adoption those that uh, the, the display progress auto, uh, how was it called again? Auto select, um, MQTT, Growl and Push Bullet, and Growl and Push Bullet also are still looking for new maintainers. So Display Progress, Auto Select, and uh, MQTT have been adopted, but Growl and Push Bullet are still looking for new maintainers. Yeah, I think Growl isn't used that much, but Push Bullet might be. So maybe someone will uh, have a have a have a good heart and take them in, because yeah, I, I really just can't. Um, find the time anymore or, or rather 
I can't find the time in a meaningful uh, distance to any questions that pop up or any issues that pop up. So yeah, I'm I'm feeling I'm just feeling like I'm not doing I'm I'm I'm, I'm not giving them the attendance and not attendance is the wrong word. Um I'm not giving them yeah, not giving them the 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 necessary uh whatever the word is that I'm currently looking for and can't think of. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I, I said it already and I hope you remember what I said there. Um, I can't give them the necessary... Mm. No, I really can't finish this sentence currently. My English is suffering, sorry. <laughs> yeah. As I said, so next appointment, sometimes in uh, roughly in a month, uh, probably plus a week or so. Um, as usual, I will post the appointment on Patreon as well, again, and then you will also be able to set yourself a reminder in YouTube as well, again, as usual. And uh, until then, I just yeah want to uh, thank everyone who attended this live and uh, also hope that it was interesting for everyone here. And... Um, Attention, thank you. Yeah, PC, thank you for, yeah, the, the word was good, just gone. Anyhow, um, thank you for, uh, yeah, thank you for, for being here. And uh, until we meet again, I guess it's just happy printing. Bye.